how do we know if the LLC is supposed to be for us? Like, when do we know we need an LLC? And whether you're part-time doing a side hustle gig or whether it's turned into a full-time business, you need to see what your exposure levels are and also your tax consequences. Those are the two main things that you really need to look at. There's other stuff there too, but really focus on those two things because your exposure level is the risk, the liability exposure that you have. What do I mean by that? So if you have a brick and mortar business, you have a standalone shop somewhere and you have a place where there are you know, people coming in and you could have clients that are coming in, say you have a pedicure, or spa, manicure type of a place. Now you have First, you have to make sure that you have the proper licenses to even start that company. Number two, you also want to make sure that you are in compliance with the health requirements. But because there's health issues there, because you're touching people's body parts, whether it's just doing a pedicure and a manicure, you need to make sure that you are protecting yourself and your personal assets and not exposing them so much where if someone were to get some type of a bacteria or some type of health issue or something were to happen to them because of something that happened in the company while they were getting the services done and they got hurt or someone was just to slip and fall in your business, who's gonna be responsible for that? You want the company to bear the burden of the liability that comes with that and not your personal assets as the owner or as a co-owner. And so that way with the LLC, you can separate the entity, which is the LLC, from the owners or the members, which is probably you or somebody else or a group of you. And so that is what the LLC does. It protects you. It adds a veil of protection right there for you. And so it helps when you have high exposure. Now, if you are in a professional business, if you are a coach, health coach, a business coach, something where people could easily say, hey, I did X, Y, Z because of you, you need to make sure you have protection. You need to make sure your protection is well. And so one of the ways to protect your business and to mitigate issues is to actually have an LLC. That is one of the strategies you can use in your business to protect it and to protect your personal assets as well. So it's a strategy that is integrated into your business. It's not something that you think afterwards, it is something that you do beforehand. And so other ways where on the flip side, you may not have too much exposure to liability is maybe if you're a photographer for a newborn or if you're doing stock photography and you're selling stock photography online or something like that where the liability, you still have some liability, liability exists, but your exposure to that liability is very minimal because the liabilities that are out there that could potential risks that you could have are very minimal to somebody who might even be doing wedding photography. You know, wedding photography does have a higher risk compared to maybe stock photography because they're actually providing clients with something that is part of a very emotional experience in their life and everybody wants to capture all the beautiful parts of that ceremony and that event. And sometimes the emotional aspect can add on to extra exposure to risk because a lot of times disputes happen because of the emotional factor behind an issue and not necessarily only the principle or the actual infraction that is being caused legally. So keep in mind those type of different liability exposures that you could be having. Actual injuries, emotional issues that pop up that can bring about liability issues as well. Money, risk, liabilities that you could also have in your business. Accountability and warranties that you might be giving or implied warranties that might be existing in your business as well or in the industry that you're working in. I'm in I'm in Texas I'm in Houston so there's a lot of oil and gas companies here and if you're in anything in oil and gas there's a lot of risk and a lot of exposure to liability at that time you want to not only have a great setup for your entity where you as owners are protected but you also want to have amazing contracts you want to have fantastic insurance because all of that will literally be the tools in your tool belt when there is a problem. Because not one thing will only protect you, there's a group of things that when put together will really edify your space that you're in and the strength of your platform that you're standing on also. So with that being said, these are the things that you're looking out for is liability exposure and also tax consequences. Tax consequences is something that you're gonna really talk to your accountant about because after a certain threshold, even as a sole proprietor or even as an LLC, you may have to like switch over to an S Corp classification for tax. And S Corp is a classification for tax. It's not a entity formation. 
If you want to see the tax consequences, talk to your accountant, talk to a bookkeeper who can give you a better idea with the business setup that you're in and the industry that you're in and see what makes sense for you. And so those are some of the things that you're looking at. So really it doesn't matter if you're doing part-time or full-time. What really matters is the exposure that you have at the end of the day to risk, the exposure that you might have to liability. How big is it? How small is it? And what is also your threshold of what's okay for you?